you're listening to the Real Life Church Podcast. To learn more about Real Life Church, including our gathering times in Yuma, Arizona, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com. Today's talk comes from Pastor Bob Van Horn. Well, hey, everybody. Glad to see you this morning here at Real Life Church. Your presence with us is really important. We're glad that you're here because you're making a point to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. We hope our content somehow ministers to you, specifically helps you to take your next step in your journey with Jesus Christ. We have been in a teaching series called Game On. I think all of us have a secret desire to want to make an impact in our world, to live for something that's bigger than just ourselves, And that's what this whole series has been about. We've been talking about God, use me. Matter of fact, we've been praying that prayer for the last several weeks. God, use me. We've prayed the prayer that says, open up my heart and open up my eyes so that I might see people that are around me. And today, we're going to talk about ourselves for a minute and why we are selfish and why and how we can overcome that selfishness. We live in a culture today that has really kind of seduced us. It's kind of gotten to the point that you're the only thing and I'm the only thing exists and everybody else comes in second. Today, we're going to overcome that. We're going to look at a Bible verse that tells us that we ought to be concerned about other people. It comes from Philippians chapter 2. Maybe you're familiar with it. It says, do not only think about your own affairs but be interested in other people and what they're doing. Now, that's an interesting verse all by itself. Do not only think. Now, some people will tell you you can never think about yourself. That's simply not true. The problem is is that too many of us today, the only thing we think about is ourselves, and that's what gets us into trouble. We concentrate on ourselves, we think about ourselves, we do things for ourselves, and we forget that there are other people right next to us that God has put in our path that we can minister to. See, I believe that there's all kinds of people around you and me that have needs. Physical needs, spiritual needs, emotional needs, financial needs, they're right there around us. What we are asking God to do is open up our heart, open up our mind, and then do something about it. If you are somebody who, well, you focus on yourself a little bit too much, how can you overcome that? How can you break that, what I would call bondage of being, well, selfish? The Bible gives us lots of examples. The Bible gives us lots of scripture to be able to follow. But what can we practically do to help us overcome this? And what we're asking God to do today is for us to change our mindset more like Jesus. In Matthew chapter 20, Jesus said, hey, if you want to be great in this world, you want to be a leader in this world, you want to set the example for this world, then you have to learn to be a servant. You have to learn to be in service over being selfish. If you're going to be service-minded over selfish, Why don't you start right there with your family? Connect with your family, ministering to our family. They are your first priority after him. Some of you have parents, um, and and maybe you're my age, or maybe you're a little bit younger. When was the last time you called them? When was the last time you talked to them? We're supposed to connect and minister to our moms and dads and our brothers and sisters. That is the picture right there of not being selfish. There's an Old Testament passage. It's one of those Ten Commandments that you've grown up with. It says that we were supposed to honor our moms and our dads. That's still true today. No matter where you're at, we're to honor our family members, honor our moms and our dads. How about encouraging your coworkers? Say something nice about them. Go out of your way to brighten their day. See, when we do that, we're taking the focus off of ourselves and we're putting it on to someone else or something else. Maybe you're a student here and you're listening and you're saying, 
Well, how do I do that? Say something nice about your classmates. Say something nice about your teacher. It can radically change somebody else's life. You never know when they're going through a hard time and a tough time, and you're the one encouragement spot in their life. Remove the gossip, remove the negative words, remove the complaining, remove the backbiting, and work on encouraging those that you work with. Pray for your friends. That's it. Pray for your friends. Ask them how you can pray for them. What can I pray about for you that I can intercede? That's what that's called, intercessory prayer. I can go to God and ask on your behalf. Can I also encourage you to pray for your friends that don't know Jesus yet? All of us should have friends that don't know Jesus. Pray for them by name. Pray for them daily, that God would open up their hearts, that God would open up their eyes to see who Jesus is. Invite them out for something. Invite them out to dinner. Invite them to go play, you know, miniature golf. Invite them to, I don't know, whatever you do. Invite somebody else to go with you. You could do that right now. How many of you actually did share this message with someone else? You could invite someone to listen to what you're listening to right now. It's a way that we could share, that we could invite them. Isn't that a great way to be able to invite somebody possibly into a relationship with Christ? Do a random act of kindness for someone. A random act of kindness. I mean, there's so many different things that we can do that just says, you know what? This world is not all dark. It is not all bleak. It is not all scary that there are kind people amongst us. You never know what that random act of kindness is going to do for someone else. When you start to do this, pray specifically that you have the attitude of Christ Jesus. He was humble in his attitude. He wasn't looking for fame. He wasn't looking for popularity. He wasn't looking for people to look at him and say how great he was because he was humble. And so one of the things I want to encourage you to do when we're looking to serve other people, keep that humble attitude in your heart. Do it because you really care about the people that you're around, that you want to make a difference in their life. In Jesus' name. If you want to be others-oriented and if you want to serve other people like Jesus did, then look for opportunities to serve. Don't wait. Don't make excuses. Just go out and do it. Do not merely just look out for yourselves, but look out for the interests of others other people. Care about what they're doing. Get the focus off of you and on to them. Let me pray for you. God, thanks for our time together. Thank you, Father, for this moment. Thank you for allowing us the privilege of being used in your kingdom. Lord, I continue to pray that you would use us, the listening audience today, whoever it is, wherever they're from, God, that you would use us and that you would open up our hearts and our minds. And God, help us to see people like you see them. And then, let's get our game on, God. Let's go out and minister to them in Jesus' name, keeping the right attitude. Those who have heard, now will go out and do, and it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right? I'll see you back next week. If you were encouraged by today's talk, be sure to rate us and hit subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you stream your podcasts. To experience other talks, videos, and live gatherings, visit us online at reallifeyuma.com or download the Real Life Church app. And again, thanks for listening to the Real Life Church Podcast.